So, in the last episode, we took Grasshopper Road. Now, we're going to make a right and take the 139 north. We're going towards the community of Bieber. We're running really heavy today, so don't feel bad that I'm uh, blocking traffic here. <laughs> traffic. What traffic? Uh, speed limit is 55, Aiden is 23 miles. We are going north on the 139. I do apologize for the windshield being a little dirty. Uh, I tend to work and then go home. And uh, yesterday at the truck stop, I didn't have a chance to wash the windshield because all the squeegees had been used for washing trucks. Or they'd been run over by trucks. And it's hard to squeegee your windshield with a messed up squeegee. It's like trying to wash your windshield with a broom. I don't know, if you got the right kind of broom, maybe it would work. Scrape them bugs off. So as we proceed north on the 139, I want to thank you for, uh, for riding along with me. I know the popular thing on YouTube right now is to go live while truck drivers are just driving down the highway, uh, but I can't do that. I view it as a safety hazard, and uh, I feel safer just doing what I'm doing now. Set up a camera and let it go, and uh, set up some good audio. I'm using my Rode microphones, of course. Looks like we're getting a little, uh, a little misty. In the last episode, you would have seen that we went from daylight to mostly cloudy. And now we are drizzled with about, I'm going to say, two miles visibility. So we are in uh, instrument uh, flying conditions. Is that what they call it? or instru instrument flying restriction, IFR. Is that what that means? I'm not a pilot, I swear. I'm just a truck driver. Uh, this part of California has not burned in many, many years. So you see the trees look very healthy. If you look closely, you'll see uh, there's a lot of scrub so if it was to get, you know, burning, it would be quite catastrophic. The forests of California are very carefully managed. And some people will say that probably managed incorrectly. And it's important that we realize that forests do have to burn every once in a while because it gets rid of the, the grasses and all that stuff. When the fires get up into the trees and the trees catch on fire, which has happened, you know, three years ago, four years ago in California, it's okay if the grass burns, but when the trees burn, then the entire forest just dies. So there's been many examples of uh, our forestry service mismanaging in California. It's really sad to see. I've, I've always wanted to do a video for you kids uh, showing the, the forest that used to be around. Uh, what's the name of that place? It's Clio, California. Uh, it, it looks like a nuclear bomb went off. Like, the, the mountains are literally like sand dunes right now. 
because the because they didn't allow you know minor burns they didn't allow any burns at all and then when the forest finally did catch fire it burned so intense that nothing could survive uh oh cross the yellow line better call the cops Got another trucker, buddy. You will see a lot of uh, LTL drivers. So that was Old Dominion. In the last episode, you would have seen a, a Oak Harbor Freight truck. Uh, you will see grain trucks. You will see livestock trucks. Every once in a while, you'll see a heavy haul truck, like hauling a tractor. So you got to be careful on these roads because you never know what traffic you're going to be approaching. I've been on this road and, and rolled up on some pretty bad accidents. Uh, inexperienced truck drivers really need to avoid this road. This, this isn't a road where you just set your cruise control and drive. You really have to manage your vehicle. Sorry for the uh, pause in video. It's starting to rain a little bit. They're calling for some rainstorms today, tomorrow, a little bit over the weekend. Today is Thursday. It is April 25th, the year 2024. It's starting to look like Oregon over here. We are an hour an hour south of Oregon. What kind of truck we got there? Hay hauler. I gave him a little extra room. You kind of have to have nerves of steel to drive on a road like this because as you can see, there is no shoulder. You drop a tire, you're going off. And with the road kind of being wet like it is right now, whatever shoulder there is, is going to be mud uh, so you can't mess around on this road like I was saying earlier I have rolled up on some pretty bad accidents where a driver had dropped a wheel off and uh, you know went sailing through the trees or off a cliff Any of you that have been watching my channel for a while, you will hear me complain about automated transmissions. And this is why I don't like automated transmissions, because right now I have complete control over the truck. An automatic transmission can't look up the road and see what gear they need to be in. Like this turn right here is a decreasing radius turn there's no transmission in the world that knows the curves that are coming up the road. I kind of have this road memorized so I know, you know, where I can speed up, where I can slow down, where I can use my exhaust brake. And you also read the signs. Uh, rock slide area. Every once in a while you'll see a sign that says uh, slow trucks. So what I'm trying to say is the manual transmission gives me more control authority. Uh, 40 mile an hour turn, we'll bring it down. Looks like we're coming up on a campground. One quarter of a mile. Oh, we got a trucker, buddy. That one is Oak Harbor. Oak Harbor Freight Lines. Uh, what campground is this? Willow Creek National Forest Campground. I'll have to stop there sometime and, and show you kids around. 
I've already taken my 30 minute break, so I can't really mess around. We got a, we got a truck like we know what we're doing. So yeah, I, I do not like automated transmissions because I need control authority over the truck. I am a control freak. And you may hear me make fun of automated transmissions. Um, I My personal belief is that it's a handicap. It makes you a lazier driver. It makes you less attendant. You pay less attention to the road. The fact that I have to shift down for this 40 mile an hour section and I have to consciously shift gears and consciously manage how much throttle I'm giving, how much engine brake. This is, this is a lot of work. There's In the last three miles, I've made, what, 100,000 calculations? So when people like I, I have friends in the in the trucking industry, when I tell them that I only do 560 miles a day, they laugh. They go, "Oh, you're a you're just a rookie. 500. Oh, geez, I could do that in my sleep." Well, take a look at my route and and tell me if you want to fall asleep. <laughs> oh, you do not want to fall asleep doing this. None of those trees are friendly. Oh, those trees will hate you. If you wind, if you get close to those trees, they will beat you up. They'll tell you, they'll tear your truck apart. They'll beat you up. It is not good times. This little valley that we're dropping into, there's an old, old farmhouse. And keep in mind, there's no phone reception here, so. Uh, you better know how to take care of business, if you know what I'm saying. What kind of truck we got here? Looks like a fuel truck. Uh, some people out here are still on, uh, like, household oil. That little cutout in the road right there is where you chain up if you're going the other direction. This is not a road I would, I would dare to take if there's any chance of snow. Because uh, like I said, there's no shoulder, there's no phone reception. You're just, you're just asking for trouble. So yeah, if you're one of my motorcycle buddies, put in the comments, uh, what, you, what do you think of this road? This is Highway 139 between Grasshopper Road, and we're going to be making a left on a road called Susanville Road, and that'll get us towards uh, Bieber, California. Uh, Bieber is, is not named after the famous Canadian... Uh, what is Justin Bieber? Come on now. He's a singer, an, an artiste. Never been into his music. I wonder why. Yeah, Sterling, what would a, a morbidly obese truck driver want to listen to Justin Bieber for? So I look cool as the other kids? I got news for you. I don't need to look cool. I don't need to sound cool. I don't need to look cool. I don't need to be cool. I need to do my job and get paid. Go home. Where I can cool off. The weather is pretty nice. It's 45 degrees out with a little bit of a rain shower. It is pretty windy. I'm kind of sheltered by the trees, but when the trees you know, move out of the way for a second, I can really feel the wind. 
in these semi trucks, you really feel the wind because the cab is mounted on airbags. It kind of just floats on top of the frame, right? And then we've got aerodynamic fairings and I'm basically driving an RV that can tow a trailer. So it tends to rock around in the wind. Uh, if you're sensitive to like being car sick, sometimes getting into the trucking industry can be a can be a problem. But I noticed people that do get car sick, once they ride in a semi truck for at least a few weeks, they they tend to do better. They tend to get over it. Um, I've, I've known people that can't ride in a semi-truck because they get sick. But once they drive a semi-truck, they're like, oh, this is all right. Um, and, and sometimes it depends on who's driving the semi-truck that they're riding in. I've always been a very smooth driver. As a matter of fact, when I got my CDL and the, you know, the DMV dude signs off on it, I had to wake the guy up. To, to ask what direction to go, you know, because you drive around town and, and go over railroad crossings and, you know, left hand turns, right hand turns, get on the freeway, proper merging, all, all the stuff they're looking for while he's, you know, he holds a clipboard over there in the passenger seat while you drive and he tells you what directions to go. And uh, I'm cruising along and I look over, the dude's, dude's asleep. And I thought, do I just keep driving and, like, just drive back to the DMV and, like, say, okay, we're done. Sign off. <laughs> but, no, I woke the guy up and I was like, hey, man, uh, I, I kind of need your help here. And he was like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, get, on the, get on the freeway. So, it, it pays to be a smooth driver, especially if you're running a team. I... I used to do a lot of team trucking, and I don't think I ever had anyone complain about riding with me. Um, many people that said, there's no way I could sleep in a semi-truck, they would sleep totally fine. And that's that's how I always drive, I'm, I, I like to be a smooth driver. In this video, I don't know how well it matches up to what it's really like riding in a semi-truck. Um, uh, pardon me for the sniffles, by the way. It's it's allergy season over here. I don't know if, the, if that camera conveys what it's actually like to ride in a semi-truck, the bouncing around and the... Because that camera's got a lot of... Uh, uh, stabilization and not only that the way that it's mounted right now uh, it's it's kind of bouncing around on a on it's not really a tripod it's just something I can clip and bend we're coming up on our road better downshift that is Susanville Road we are really heavy today Eleven miles to uh, to Bieber. Yeah, I'm I'm usually not this heavy. Beautiful country, though. You'll see a few farms. Uh, another mile up the road here, there's a cattle farm. You'll see a you'll see a sign that says uh, "Cattle Crossing Ahead." Uh, maybe in three miles. Now that we're kind of out of the trees, I can really feel the wind. You might see me kind of darting a little bit, you know, between one side of the road and the other. 
it's important to have kind of a loose stance. You know, I'm not running off the road. I'm not really crossing any lines. Uh, but if you fight it too much, you'll wear yourself out. Here's your cattle crossing. Got to watch out for cattle. There's a house for sale right there. I'll pull it up on Zillow and, and show you kids. I'm willing to bet it's probably $400,000. Looks like we got a buddy. We got a Chevy buddy. Looks like we got a trucker buddy. Got your bright lights on there. That's Old Dominion. Pull a set of doubles. Uh, looks like another old Dominion driver. Pull a set of doubles. So, as you can see, this route is very popular with the LTL companies. I'm not going to say what company I work for, it's for you to figure out. Uh, it's Right Arrow Trucking. I am a rat, a right arrow trucker. Okay, I, I, I got on this road to get away from traffic. What's with pickup trucks and semi trucks? Get off my road. I paid for this. I'm kind of glad it rained a little bit to help clean the, clean the windshield off. Uh-oh. Somebody crossed the line. He's going to get fired. He's a dangerous truck driver. So I usually have my music just absolutely blasting. Like this is a heavy metal road. Or, uh, you know... Disco. Disco is good on this road. What kind of music would you be listening to on this road? And don't give me some, oh, I'll listen to country music. No. This is not a country music road. Not allowed. Denied. Seems like we've uh, moved out of that little storm cell a little bit. Starting to see some uh, some clearing in the skies ahead. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but to our right, this is considered Big Valley. Big Valley, California, I believe. Uh, there's a hot springs up here too, like right in this area that I'm at. When it gets cold, I like I like being able to to see out in the distance and see like the steam, the steam rolling off the uh, little ponds and stuff. That's how you know it's heated, heated by geothermal activity. If you're a photogra photographer, this is also a beautiful area to uh, take pictures of barns, farmhouses. Uh, to our right, behind that little white house with the gray roof, there is a hot springs. I don't think it's public. It looks like it's on private property. Uh, don't ever jump on private property to do a, a hot springs you might get shot it's a little windy out here I'm getting blown around So 
So speed limit's 55, and when you see a sign like that one right there, usually California puts a sign like that where it's just a right arrow kind of. Uh, that usually means 45 miles an hour. I'm not going to tell you how fast I was going. 45 would be way too slow. Come on now. We've got time and distance to cover. We've got distance to cover with minimal time. That's one of the biggest challenges in trucking is uh, you're racing the clock all the time. You're racing the clock, you're dealing with traffic, you've got to manage, you got to manage your eating, your sleeping, and your living. And then you've got all the factors that you can't control like weather and traffic. And then you do something stupid like me, like go down this two lane road Trying to, trying to keep a good speed, a good velocity, watching out for deer and cow and UFOs. And I'm holding a conversation. As you can see, we're approaching humanity. We've got trash trucks. We got Subarus. What else have we got out here? We got some farmhouses. seen a bunch of semi trucks, seen a bunch of pickup trucks. You can get yourself some farm equipment there on the right. Uh, the hay business, alfalfa is very big out here. They also do potato, I believe. There, there's, a, there's a few crops out here. I just, I, I'm always looking at the, like, the cars that people store in their yards. Like, especially if I see an old cab over a semi-truck, I'm like, ooh, cattle crossing! Yeah, I see an old semi-truck and I'm like, yeah! Sabira, good time.